The word circus brings to mind fun, glamour and glitz, danger and excitement. It is wholesome entertainment for the whole family. The making of this documentary started already in 1989 when we had a chance to film the everyday life of Circus Finlandia and got to have a glimpse behind the scenes. That film was never finished and this footage hasn't been seen before. Children all over the world dream of running away with the circus. But what's the life really like with a traveling troupe? Finland's national circus, Circus Finlandia, is a family-run circus by the Anströms. We followed the life of this circus family, especially their children Heidi and Carl Jr. In this old film footage, 12-year-old Heidi is a promising young circus artist. Circus family Jarts has worked at Circus Finlandia since the beginning of 1980s. The Jarts children, Natasha and Carlo, already had their own acts. Over 20 years later, we continue filming at Circus Finlandia and meet the young stars again. <laughs> The youngest of Janström children, Carl Jr., Pikkukalle, was only nine years old. Here he is performing at the children's circus show. Circus children hone their skills by performing to child audiences at charity shows. It was funny, very, very funny to go back in time and uh, to see me and my brother and Natasha and Carlo is really <laughs> incredible. <laughs> nice memories came back. When we really started doing our own acts, so that's quite of a big thing. That was like the hair act was my act. I really did it and I went to Bulgaria, I went to North Korea working with that act. So it was really uh, the biggest thing I think I did that time. Carl Jr. is the new director of Circus Finlandia after the reins were handed down to the next generation by the founding couple Karl Janström Sr. and Lena Jurvakainen. Acrobatic numbers like this are getting rare. Many members of this group are Olympic gymnasts. He has a very good eye for the show, for the artist, and how he puts everything together. So, yeah, and he's good at it. And he loves it and he wants to do it so. I think he's doing a very good job. The founders of Circus Finlandia, Lena and Kalle Sr., still take part in running the circus. Our we terrible kids, but at least we have many grown-ups looking after us, so it was really safe one, a safe childhood. You could really relax, that you always knew there was somebody looking after you. You were never alone, sort of. Friendships were formed for life. 
the family Yarts shares a long history with the Janströms, and their daughters Heidi and Natasha became the best of friends. Artists come from all over the world. Heidi and Natasha spoke a mixture of German, Italian and Finnish with each other. The friendship continues to this date. I never thought I would not be a circus artist. I did have my premiere, my own act, in Finlandia, so... <laughs> I was everywhere, and I remember my father screaming my name many times. <laughs> and her name. <laughs> uh, everything we did, we did together. <laughs> there was a lot of planning and... and uh, we used to get in a lot of trouble. Yes. And then along came Pikukala a little bit later on, because he was smaller, but he also used to get in a lot of trouble. The best game I think we invented was sliding down the tent when they were pulling, we were pulling down. down. When Giovanni was on one side, we used to run on the other side, and he used to come running back. And now when you think, if our kids would do yes. that, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and we've now been friends now for 30 there years. Is. There was a gap between when you left Finland yeah. for a few years because that time you didn't have mobile phone, no internet. But we never but, lost. No, we sometimes, if we could find a we'd send letters and sometimes try to call each other. Then no, it was, it yeah, gone. never stopped. Is the good or bad thing? Hmm. <laughs> the jury is still out on that. <laughs> We're here, so I don't know. It was always me and Nate. Yeah. It was nobody else. No, but nobody could come in our team. I think if somebody tried to come and play with us, they would go very fast home crying. Or because you know this was our service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was kicking all the artists out. My dad is tent master here, so you are not working. Please take your stuff, go away. And if they didn't listen to her, I said like my dad's the boss, so pick up your stuff and please leave. <laughs> this was our yeah. service. <laughs> Natasha's brother Carlo was also born into circus. He currently works as a ringmaster for Circus Finlandia. The old footage is from the children's show rehearsals. The Yards family name goes way back in the circus world. Sadly, father and tent master Giovanni Arts passed away just a few years ago. It was really nice, yeah. I, I felt, especially when I saw my father, I felt really inside, uh, happy. My father, my mother, my uncle, my cousins, uh, my grandfather was too, flying trapeze, and uh, he was also performing with lions. I'm a uh, fourth generation. I'm a uh, half Italian, half Mexican. My mother is Mex from Mexico. Uh, she was also with, working with my father in uh, like a flying trapeze together. And uh, now she's working in kiosk, kiosk, in the bar here in Syracuse. Uh, my father was uh, also flying trapeze, and and then uh, he came here. He made two years like flying trapeze, and then he started to be like a, a ten master here in Finlandia. And he's been, I don't know, maybe ten or more, ten years or more, like. Ten master here, and, and Natasha, she's uh, 
married in Sweden with a Swedish uh, guy and they have circus there. It's a Circus Olympia. And why did you move to Sweden? Because I pushed her. Yes. She was thinking like, should I go? Shouldn't I go? Hmm. My mom doesn't want me to go. And I said, you go or I will never speak to you again. <laughs> yeah, and now she tells me. Come back to Finland. So, why did you move to Sweden? <laughs> why are you coming? <laughs> I normally I like to perform with small animals and I go from birds, ducks, geese, rabbits, goats. Now we've been upgrading to alpacas which are a little bit taller and I'm starting to train my parrots but that I don't know where it's going. To the oven. <laughs> Over 20 years ago, we also filmed and became friends with a young clown couple, Bonbon bon and Tina. Lasse Norager is from Denmark and Tina Milukangas is Finnish. Now they are back at the circus where they met with their children, Julia and Joachim. In the 80s, Tina homeschooled Kalle and Heidi. But still I call, her, call him Piku Kalle, I think. I think the director shouldn't have the name like Piku Kalle, but that's, that's thick. It make these photos. And the makeup was very light. Like now. That it haven't moved more in 20 years. That's quite funny. <laughs> because it's not like anything, you don't have a mesh or anything to. Yeah. So it's only by hand. And then that it's so much the same after 20 years. The clown's makeup is painted on almost every day of the year. Every clown has his own version. <laughs> it was funny. I think I'm not much older than you in this. Really? Four years, no. Four. I'm not born into circus like many of my colleagues. I'm the, f I'm the first generation. My parents were school teachers. And but very creative school teachers with a lot of interest in theater, music and, and circus as well. They were very free parents, so they didn't really care what time we came to bed. So we would just sleep on that table in the, in the jazz club and while my father would be jamming with, actually with some very professional musicians uh, from Denmark and even from America, they came sometime. And it was like a, a gimmick to get, get the young boy up to drum with some of the pro musicians. So I was sitting there as a, as a little kid and I would play with Wild Bill Davison from USA and <laughs> different famous jazz musicians. Then my interest came to, um, to the Tivoli Boy Guard in uh, Denmark. It's a big orchestra for children children from 9 to 16 years. Yeah, so my interest for circus actually started during my time in Tivoli, where I would be watching a lot of uh, world-class artists that were performing in Tivoli in that time. It was one of the most attractive working places for the top circus acts that didn't bother to go on tour with their circus. It was not unusual. I, I saw one act like 10 times every week, several times every day. I could because we had some breaks in between playing and then we would go and watch a show and so I, I really learned a lot just from watching top class artists. Circus Finlandia is a relative young circus in Europe. It existed now for around 35 years, which is a young age for a, for a circus. When I came here 24 years ago, it was like a medium class show, in, if you see in European circus world. And now 20 years later, they have really gone up and up and up. And now they're in a like, top 10 class in, among the 
European shows. So. We perform about 250 shows on a tour in, in Finland, which is quite normal for any circus in Europe. Average is maybe 1,000 people in per show, so in a season like this we perform for a quarter of a million people. And it's quite a lot if you compare to other kind of shows. Bonbon bon and Tina have performed together all over Europe. Now as celebrated international circus artists, they are currently working here at Circus Finlandia again. If Tina is not on the stage, she's taking care of the techniques behind the curtains. She has some creative skills, I have some other, and when we combine them we can, can make some quite serious stuff. Tina has an art degree and has made circus art for Bon Bon and to other artists as well. So also we do a like a lot of uh, props, costumes for ourselves but also for other artists who, who ask for our services. During the winter season the couple work on new acts at their home and work studios in Denmark. She has like a natural talent for performing. Um, I have to practice much more to do the to do the performing. For me, it's not like a natural talent. It's more like a strong will to do it, and then then I do all the exercises I need to. In the in the 70s, there was a actually a badminton player doing something like this. We saw a film cut of this thing and then I just thought it could be great to do that like a clown act and I didn't have any badminton skills at all. Uh, it took us like a, at least a year of clean practice before we even started with the act and still now after 20 years we are developing it and putting in new tricks and yeah that just tells a lot about clowning. One of their most celebrated acts is a badminton number. The couple have even received a prize at the Monte Carlo Circus Festival. I'm now on year 27, I think, in this business. And I don't feel that I'm still quite there yet, so... Uh, I was saying when I started, I probably need 20 years before I'm where I want to be. And, and that was really true. And, and still there's room for, for getting better. Yeah, I have a policy that uh, I don't copy uh, any of my colleagues in the circus business. I love to take ideas from old silent movies and, and things that are not around anymore. I like to take old stuff and renew it and make it my own. You always say that Older clowns are better than younger clowns. And it's not because that the age actually make you better, but, but it's the experience and, and the practice that, that makes you better. It's the time. The clowns, they can be really old and be charming. And like they say, what older you get as a clown, you better you get. But as a matter of fact, the wife, don't work the same way, <laughs> and then, uh, then I think we have to, we have to stop one day. And I, th I hope Julia will uh, take my place one day, and do some things what I do with Bon Bon. Julia is much like me, very social and talking to all the people. And I think it's easy for her to get very good friends with everyone. <laughs> Over 20 years ago, Tina homeschooled the Janström children. The tradition continues with Julia and Joachim. 
peloissa on heitä tuijottavia messuvieraita. We are very lucky, because circus can be also very tough and hard mm. and uh, bad experience, but we, we are really lucky with our, our life and our work and so of course I hope she would also get the same, but we always laugh that she's going to be a bank director. How mathematic genius she is. <laughs> no, she thinks always she's going to be a vet and make a dog number in the circus. <laughs> I've been working in the kiosk and I got friends there. And I wonder what to blame it. You're the third account? Yeah, I would say the circus. I like the circus life. I'll make my own kind of new act. Mix of magic, clown and animals. part of the circus life that normally the artist families are together and the children join the parents and it's a great place for the children to be in the circus because when they have done their normal school homeschool work then they can do like circus stuff and, and it's quite natural for them that they get some interest to do circus disciplines. Sä otat, niin sä vaihtanut väriä ja sit sä avaat sen ja näytät, että siellä ei ole enää mitään. Moikka! Joakim is going to be for sure something in the circus. Something for sure. Yeah. Clowning or I don't know what, but 100% sure. The younger son Joachim was born with the rare Sotos syndrome. Because of Sotos, Joachim is physically big for his age. He also faces daily challenges with learning and concentration. Suddenly I have a record in my hand. Have you seen that? From having a record, record, I suddenly have But I've watched it through the camera, so... Yeah, it's true, but it's not... So I'm not necessarily seeing the... Like but they are shooting... Yeah, Joachim is a kid with some special needs and... Uh, at home, he is. Uh, he have a place in a in a special school. Normal school work, he he need to be one to one to to learn something because, like they say, his concentration is maybe around ten minutes on a, on a good day. But then it's very funny to see when he start to juggle that he can maybe juggle for two three hours to learn a new trick. It's like many things like that in the circus. We see that he's actually able to learn a lot more than he can learn in, in a normal school. So all specialists and everyone say that actually circus is the best place for Joachim to be at the moment. And yeah, he learn a lot here and, and we are doing the home school. We, we know how to teach him the best way. So he's not really missing anything as long as we are in the circus. So it's a good life for him. and. He can do all his performing and he's, he's liked among, among the other circus people as well. So I think he have a good life here. It's, it's good if they would like to stay in this business. But of course we don't know what, what will be the... how this business will be like in, in 10 years, we don't know. It's like that with the whole world. 
we don't know what the banking business will be like in 10 years if, if they choose to be bank accountants or anything like that. You learn more sort of about people and different cultures when you're in the circus. You, you learn to respect like people from other countries, religious, politics and like this. You don't really care, but it's the childhood in the circus. It gave, it, it gave me much things to work with. I'll never, be, I'll never be as good a juggler as I am a whistler. <laughs> well, I'm going to work in an old people's home. So I'm going to take care of elderly people. From the circus they teach you from a kid, you always have to respect the elderly people. Who is older than you, you respect. You say hello, good morning, good night, and like this. So when I went first time to practice in this place and they were saying, oh, you're so polite for Finnish person. And you say hello, you ask how I am. I say, That's from the upbringing, the circus. They teach you this manners, how to behave with elderly people. So. No, I put in first and Mä roikun nyt vähän aikaa hiukset ja sitten ehkä mä jatkan trapeetsi numeroa. Aha. Muutaman vuoden tein tätä numeroa ja sitten jatkan trapeetsillä. No, kyllä tämä hiusnumero kiinnostaa, mutta jos on niin kuin kovin kauan viitti tehdä, että se on aika sellainen sattu, niin trapeetsille sitten sen jälkeen. Että se on kiva vaiheella välillä numero. Että on ollut tämä ikurin avustaja niin mun pikkuveliin avustajalle. Mä oon kaikkea tehnyt. Aju järsiukseen. It uh, came to a point that uh, I wanted to do something else. And the schooling, what I'm doing now, I was thinking for 10 years before I left the circus. And uh, for now it feels very good. I like it, what I'm doing. And uh, and especially now, like, when it came, this the, the moment of change, like my brother's taking over the circus. And my parents are getting not younger, but older, so... I thought like it's even good that somebody's gonna stay home just in case if one year they can't go with the circus if we, everybody would be here there would be nobody helping them home. I wanted to sort of challenge myself too in one way to see will I manage outside from the circus because sort of the circus is very quite a closed place one way you sort of live in a sort of a bubble inside so it's just circus so I wanted to see something more too. It's, so it's not that I gave up circus forever, maybe, who knows, maybe one day I come back. But for now, I, I enjoy that what I'm doing. I really enjoy it. Eihän sitä varmaan silloin ihan alussa, kun on tätä alettu tekemään, voinut kuvitella, että siitä kuitenkin tulee näin iso juttu. Silloin alkuvuosina oli vaikeuksia ja päätä lyötiin seinään ja tehtiin työtä ja syksyllä itkettiin, että vaikka on koko kesä tehty töitä, niin Velat eikö vaan kasva. Ja se oli silloin raskasta. Ja jossakin vaiheessa se menas se usko loppua, mutta lapset pelasti oikeastaan sen te konkurssin jälkeen. Me olisi ehkä jo luovutettiin, mutta lapset nosti semmoisen metelin, että mitä me sitten tehdään, jos ei me saa tehdä sirkusta. Onneksi se sitten jatkettiin. Ja sitten pikkuhiljaa se sitten rupesi niin antaa hedelmää, niin jos vai saa sanoa, että. director Carl Jr. spent years all over the world as a circus artist before coming back to his home, Circus Finlandia. Until the mid 
80s. It was, it was quite big and everything was going well. And then after 95, 94, something like that, depression, economic crisis, and we had to sell the horses because we didn't have uh, money to keep them. And in the 2000, we started to go up again. It was good to invest and stuff. Now we're here. So. Although running a circus is literally a juggling act, Circus Finlandia is doing now better than ever. to I had a feeling that I have to be here so I came back I was working in other circuses and you see how the other circuses work and how the other shows work so you can build or your own show so better take what you like and make it good Ensin on Jumala ja sitten on Jäänström ja sitten on pitkä matka, ettei ole kettä ja sitten on vasta me muut. He's like the advisor helping me. A little bit in the background, but still. No tässä me vaan köpötellään nyt. No kyllä me vielä ollaan aika paljon silti tässä. Eihän tästä nyt pääse noin vaan irti. I think we have the best mechanic in the world. He, he, does, he doesn't do only mechanic work, he builds the wagons and stuff. There's my sister taking care of the paperwork, my brother is helping him and, and doing, putting the show together. And I think because nobody just does one thing, like everybody does a bit everything. I think that's why you don't have to have so many people because nobody says like, okay, I just take care of the papers and that's it. If there's lack of painters, you go and paint. If there's, you have to clean the caravans, you go and clean the caravans in between. You have to be flexible and wanting to do many things. We're like a showman farmers and every animal is an individual also. Not all of them can work and perform in the circus. You have so much different jobs and things you can do in the circus and it's hard work and in the circus, I think people are more healthy than normal people because we're kind of outside all the time. So, when you're in this business, it's like it's every day. It's not like you. If you have a bad day, then you can say, "Oh, I take a day off today." We we, we don't really have that in the circus. On, on this tour, on I think the tour is 200. 12 days and we are playing 195 days so it's like seven days that we we don't have a show in seven months one day a month so it takes some some discipline that you have to be on every day we wake up around before seven i wake up they get up a little later the rest of the family i have to cook coffee also make coffee for us and tea for children and it takes about 20 minutes to pack the whole caravan. It's not allowed to make any mistakes. <laughs> You're not allowed to forget any door or something because that is going to be a nice surprise when you come in and one door has been opened, everything is out and make a mess. Huh? And then, um, yes, Julia get up and then he, she go and start the truck. And um, she ma arranges everything in the truck. She put the navigator on. Plus is making outside everything, the water pipes, electric cables. When I'm ready here, then I said, yes, push, because then you have to push the pullouts in. <laughs> and then we start to drive to the next place. I drive the truck and last to drive the small car with the trailer. He's driving in the front and showing the way. In Finland, the distances between towns can be long, and the journey from place to place takes sometimes hours. The circus moves almost every day. The fleet has animals, 100 people, 25 trucks, caravans, cars and trailers, and even a sauna on wheels. Next round, quick. 
out everything. Children are still outside looking at their new place. And then I make breakfast, and then we start to make school after breakfast. We usually make two, three hours school. And then it's the food, and then we have time also sometimes to yeah, look the some things from this town where we are, what is special. And then it's already the show. We have to make ready before five, four o'clock. So that's the day. Then it's the show. And the whole family is working, so it goes quite smooth now. When it, in old days, when they were small, it was other things we had to do and other problems. When they have to sleep and when they have to eat, that they are happy for the show and they sleep in the show time. And so now, when they're older, it's other things we have to think about. <laughs> they are these uh, local clowns before the show. They make half an hour before, and Julia is quite big uh, help in the kiosk because of the language. He's, she speaks Finnish and Swedish also. But end of the show, we have to pack everything back to the trailer. That's already like half past nine. We take a little evening food and then we already go to sleep because we have to go early up. But we have time also to be a little bit our friends and, and they come sometime here. It belongs to a circus life to be together also. And to have every day is like experience for the children also. No? And also the family life is nice, that we are always together. Really they have had nice childhood. And I also think very positive now because they are going to be teenage. So I think maybe it go a little easier. We know them so good and they're quite protected life because they're always with us really. Maybe it's too much sometimes for them. But <laughs> I think the, um, that we are always a little unsure about the future. We can't never plan very long time. It's like one year at a time, sometimes two years. You can plan forward. Uh, if it's only like us and the work, I think it would be easy. But when we have to think about the children and the school, what is the best for them? And because it's a very important time now, like Julia is eighth class and ninth class. And of course, circus is really nice when the sun is shining, but when it's raining and mud, and <laughs> then it's not so nice. But otherwise, I, I would hope also my children come the circus to work one day because it's a nice life really. negative maybe it's just the weather <laughs> if it's a bad weather okay bad weather you need rain sometimes liian pienet kentät <laughs> keväällä kun lähdetään liikkeelle kun on kylmä ja on vielä routamaassa ja on vielä märkä ja palelee ja vesiletkut jäässä niin silloinhan se on vähän semmoista like circus life is like this. You meet somebody, you get friends, but after they leave and sometimes you never see them anymore. I've been used to it about it and it's like this is my life. <laughs> Uh, she's Finnish and she's at home. She's a normal human, let's say. <laughs> no, it's like that. They come sometime during summer when she have summer holidays and, and winter time I'm there all the time with them at home. It's a hard work, yeah, especially if you are an artist and uh, every year you have to find a new circus, a new contract and moving all over the world. and. Uh, uh, sometimes I work like from 6 o'clock in the morning until uh, 11 in the night. Especially when we move and build up and uh, we have two shows and, and after the second show I have to take down the tent and so it it's goes all day. I'm used to it. 
I prefer to move every day than stay here like five, six days in one place. Yeah, it's nice after, it's nice the first, second, third day, but then start to be like uh, bored. I, I have to, still, it's uh, something missing. I mean, it's nice when you build up and uh, move, travel to other place, build up, and I'm used to it about that. I like my job, yeah. Otherwise, I will not be here for 20 years. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, less romantic than, than the most people imagine. There are some very nice days in circus, but, but, but it also becomes every day. The, the show is the, is the main point of the day by us. So the, the whole life in our, in our days, it's, it's made around, around the show time. So I don't relax like 100% before the show is over in the evening. It's not like we travel when we want to. Sometimes we are on snow and icy roads and we just have to get there and we have to get the show done. And, and other times it can be fantastic because you have fantastic weather and fantastic places by the sea or so it's so different and uh, yeah we have uh, very good days and very bad days in the circus. I can't remember what town it was and we had a fight or something and I was throwing these flowers after him and after I was getting really I was so unhappy because I killed my flowers. <laughs> when we met me and Bong Bong Artists was very much together because we didn't have satellites, we didn't have computers. So every evening we sat out and talked and have a have a nice time together. So nowadays it's different. They go have to go. Oh, we have a football match or something. They rush to the caravan. That also helped because uh, our, we keep also contact with our friends with the Facebook and everything. So it's really we don't see each other maybe many years, but when we see, we know everything what we have done. In the 80s, Circus Finlandia's cooperation with the Bulgarian state circus was tight. Many Bulgarians performed in Finland and passed on their skills to the next generation. Nadia taught Natasha. Here she is again with the hula hoop number. Tatiana is Natasha and Carlos' youngest sister. So yeah, I went from my 89 till 90, I was in Bulgaria working with our circus. Otherwise I was like 12 when I lived alone in my caravan in that country and uh, I was doing my hair act. It was quite interesting time because that time was really a big change in Bulgaria. Like the communist was going down and there was coming this socialist life. So I was queuing for bread, I was queuing for milk, I was queuing for food. So it was really like, really hard time, sort of, but it was nice. I met much people, nice people, and uh, I was practicing at the, at the Bul Bulgaria State Circus. They had this big building, and uh, I was practicing there, my trapeze act, and Lily was teaching me, and uh, but I enjoyed myself. It was really... When I think like I was just 12 when I went there, I would never send my daughter somewhere. I couldn't. Like one way I think like it was quite, my parents were quite brave or trusting, I don't know, but they let, uh, we've been traveling so much around the world, like alone. Only domestic animals, such as dogs and horses, are allowed in Finnish circus. In this English number, all the dogs are rescued from animal shelters and are now traveling the world with Pat. Heidi's daughter Alexia loves animals and would like to continue the family career in Circus Finlandia. 
Well, she's 13. She's a circus freak. <laughs> she loves the circus. She wants to be with the circus. She loves horses. Mm -hmm. When we were kids, the circus was like you could see it would go. Then we thought it would go forever. But now you never know what happened. I think it's very important that you can do other things than just circus stuff. She's only 13, so she still can change her mind. So I said it's important that you get an education and, and study something. So you have the possibility always to come to circus, but you have the possibility to do something else. Heidi and Natasha are godparents to each other's children. Does Natasha also hope that her son will follow in the footsteps of her family? I hope that he will, uh, or at least be a part of his life in the circus. But he's very shy, so it's very early. Shy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to say when they're so small. It depends on my children what they want to do when they are bigger. If they want to continue the circus, of course I, I cannot stop them. They do. If they want, they do it. Especially now, since I became a mom, when you read the newspapers, you look at the news, you're like, oh, I, like, uh, I'm more scared because here when the kids are around the circus, even when my daughter she was here for one and a half months this summer with my mom, I was never scared because I know there's always somebody looking after her. But when I'm home, if I work night shift or evening shift, she has to be alone, home alone, like in a private life, I'm more scared that if it, she would be here. I belong here. So I should go more back to Finland, that's it. Yes, I will. I'm talking to your husband today. <laughs> it feels, it really feels home. Everybody knows me here. I grew up here and... Uh, yeah, I can just be myself. It's home. Yeah, and as soon as I come back, it's like I've always been here the whole season, so they just start bossing me around. <laughs> oh, look at this, can you go and get that? Here's the mother, Let me really. Run, really. She's the mother. Le mie bambine. Terribly. <laughs> Terribly. <laughs> so I think Together. we cut it out. No, we cut it out. <laughs> cut. 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 <laughs> Terribly. And then Together. we complain to, to our kids. Yeah. They're terrible. They're yeah, terrible. terrible. <laughs> so hey, back. Yeah. Me and Lena come crazy. <laughs> and Giovanni. What is up to Mother Yards is always happy to see the children. <laughs> At the moment, the future of Finlandia seems bright. The next generations will continue in this business. Hyvä jos jatkuu tietenkin, että joku vielä. Kukaanhan ei tiedä, siis maailman tilanne muuttuu, että miten pystyykö tekemään. Siinä milloin mitäkin maailmassa sattuu. Ei se kannata miettiä etukäteen näitä tämmöisiä kovin paljon. Jos ei jatka sieltä, niin se on tavallaan turhaa ne hurakset, mitä on tehty. <tuh> What's happening in the world affects Finland and the people in Finland. So I really hope and wish that there will not be any big crisis worldwide for now. And I wish and hope the circus is going well. And I think what kept uh, Circus Finlandia going so well is, like my father and like my brother is still doing, that taking good artists. They are thinking when they put the show together, they don't just take acts here and there. They you know, think like, okay, what, what kind of style the show we want to do and what kind of artists would work together. They try to, to put new stuff all the time and they're not, they're not scared to take risks to, to try something new all the time. And like every year they try to get some, something new in the circus and something that sort of sometimes shocks the people a little bit that it makes them think so the biggest thing is that they love what they're doing they love the show they love the circus and I think when you love something what you do your work it comes out very good because if you just do it for the money and just to it, it doesn't go in the end it doesn't go in the end every time when they come to the audience it's, that's when the magic starts because you never know what kind of audience is and what kind of uh, interaction you get 
you learn every, every, in every show something new. So. But the experience from people coming into the circus is that it's quite different than they thought, thought it would be. Some things are much nicer and some things are not, not so nice than, than they thought. If someone tried and they stay like for a season, then, then they also come back and do it again. Life in circus is often grueling and uncertain. But in what other career does the whole family join in and the traditions are passed on from one generation to another? That is the strength of traditional circus. It is family-friendly entertainment provided by families to an audience consisting of all generations.